Hi there and welcome to the Richie Allen television show in association with beyondvision.tv and davidike.com forward slash headlines. My name is Richie Allen. Lovely to be with you as always. Today is Friday, April 29th, 2016. We've had all sorts of weather in the city today and yesterday. Hailstones, snow, sleet, uh, the whole lot. It's very cold out there. Must be all that climate change. Not going to get into that today. We've gotten into that too much recently, maybe. Uh, always lovely to be with you. Hayden Hewitt will be dropping in and out, uh, my producer, of course, and uh, my friend will drop in and out with comments whenever he feels like it. He doesn't have to be invited. I want to say, before we go anywhere, a massive, massive, heartfelt uh, happy birthday. Uh, all the love in the world to the great David Icke, uh, who is obviously uh, a big supporter of the independent media and a big supporter of this programme. Uh, an amazing bloke. Privileged to know him. I've known him a long time now. And uh, love you, mate. Happy birthday. I know you've got a big day planned with the grandchildren and the family on the Isle of Wight. I'm sure it'll be special. Busy times ahead for David with the worldwide wake up tour taking place through 2016 and 2017. And I must mention, before we go any further, that if you bought a ticket for David's June 18th appearance at the Empire Theatre in Shepherd's Bush, it isn't happening there now. It's been moved to the O2 Brixton Academy because essential, essential maintenance being carried out on Shepherd's Bush Empire Theatre won't be completed in time. So the uh, event has moved just down the road to the O2 Brixton Academy. That's important uh, because it means there are extra tickets available. It's a bigger venue. Go to davidike.com for all the details. Happy birthday, mate, and thanks for everything. Loads to get into today. We could have gotten into so much today, but we're going to primarily focus on two issues. One, the wonderful, monumental news that the families of the 96 men, women and children who were murdered at Hillsborough, who were uh, some, some people say murder is a very strong word manslaughter they were killed because of the gross negligence and incompetence of the uh, South Yorkshire police and then there was a monumental cover up this week we learned at Warrington Court that an unlawful verdict an unlawful killing verdict was handed down uh, in favour of the families and of the victims not before time we'll talk about that later and why it's hugely important because we talk all the time about how when men and women come together and stand up against tyranny with no ego and no self-serving nonsense, when you stand together against tyranny, you can win. We'll talk about that a bit later on. But today, we're going to kick off with the fact that um, the Labour Party, apparently, and its supporters are a bunch of anti-Semitic racists. Well... That's if you believe the news today. I could go on BBC News right now, uh, Sky News, The Telegraph. Uh, the Labour Party has uh, become an endemic, or it, it has become an institution, apparently, which is beset by endemic anti-Semitism. I don't think it has. We'll get into that shortly. What's kicked all this off? Well, Naz Shah, Bradford MP, tweeted or retweeted some things a couple of years ago that have come to light again about America and about Israel being co-opted or relocated to America. The former mayor of London, Ken Livingston, uh, two-time mayor, I believe, of London, the most recent time, 2000 to 2008, I believe, uh, Labour mayor of London. Am I right in saying around about that? Something like that. I'm always wrong with these things. You might say research it, Richie. You've only got to write it down. But I'm a lazy bastard. I've got a big memory. I think 2000 to 2008. Uh, Hayden, roll it. We've got the uh, Ken Livingston comments made to Vanessa Feltz on BBC Radio London. Here it is. She talked about relocating Israel to America. She talked about what Hitler did being legal. And she talked about the Jews rallying. And she used the word Jews, not Israelis or Israel. You didn't find that to be anti-Semitic. Oh, it's completely over the top. It's not anti-Semitic. I mean, let's remember when Hitler won his election in 1932, his policy then was that Jews should be moved to Israel. He was supporting um, Zionism. His boy went mad and ended up killing six million Jews. But the simple fact in all of this is that I mean, Naz made these comments at a time when there's another brutal Israeli attack on the Palestinians. And there's one stark fact that virtually no one in the British media ever reports. In almost all these conflicts, the death toll is usually between 60 and 100 Palestinians killed for every Israeli. Now, any other country doing that would be accused of war crimes, but... 
So Ken was suspended. He was suspended by the Labour Party for those comments. Why was he suspended by the Labour Party for those comments? Well, we'll come to that. He basically said that in uh, 1933, Adolf Hitler did a deal with uh, the Zionists in Germany. He said that he supported Zionists. That particular time he did, maybe Livingston could have gone on to say he supported the Zionists in wanting to relocate uh, 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 German Jewish people to uh, to Palestine. We'll come to that in a few minutes as well. But I don't think there was anything wrong with what Livingston said to Vanessa Feltz. I also don't believe that what Naz Shah said about if uh, America wants to support Israel to the extent that it does, maybe we should relocate Israel to the United States. I don't believe that is anti-Semitic. I understand some Jewish people being pissed off by it, but I don't believe it's necessarily anti-Semitic. Although I am uh, reliably informed by my friend Hayden Hewitt that she has since profusely apologised for those comments. But let's, let's, let's look at the fallout of it. Chris Bryant is the shadow leader of the Commons. Um, we've got a clip. This is uh, Bryant yesterday talking about uh, apologising or not apologising for anti-Semitism. Have a look. Mr Speaker, as Passover ends on Saturday, let me say again, as clearly as I possibly can, anti-Semitism is wrong, full stop, end of story. I am sick and tired of people trying to explain it away, and yes, I'm talking to you, Ken Livingston. Of course the illegal settlements are wrong and the Palestinians deserve a better deal. Of course, too, rocket attacks on Jewish kibbutzim are wrong and Hamas and Hezbollah must acknowledge the right of Israel to exist. But I was taught to judge people not according to the colour of their skin or their race or their religion, uh, their gender or their sexuality, but according to the strength of their character. I love the way guys like Brian say things like, it's okay to criticise the illegal settlement activity by Israel in Palestine, but then moves on to talk about the crimes of Hamas and Hezbollah, who I've, by the way, never supported and never agreed with. Look back through my catalogue of thousands of radio and television programmes. Violence is wrong no matter who commits it. But it's okay to criticise that, says Bryant. When the fuck has Chris Bryant or any of his colleagues ever done anything about that, though? Isn't that interesting, that? The illegal settlement activity is wrong. What are you going to do about it, Chris? What have you ever tried to do about it? What have your colleagues in Labour or in the Parliamentary Labour Party ever done to criticise or condemn the Israelis for that? When we support the boycott, divestment and sanction movement against Israel, you, uh, a coward, say that it's, uh, it's racist. We sanction any other regime in the world, quite rightly. The Iranian, uh, some of the uh, human rights abuses committed in Iran are heinous. Uh, Saudi Arabia, the worst regime on planet Earth. North Korea, let's condemn that. Let's sanction these countries. So we've never sanctioned Saudi Arabia. Let's not talk about sanctioning Israel. Might come back to Saudi Arabia. An extraordinary thing happened then just after this. Uh, Livingston was walking through the lobby at Westminster. While he was walking through the lobby, he was conducting a live radio interview with James O'Brien from LBC. He couldn't make this up. Absolutely madness. So he's on the phone to O'Brien, right? And he's given all of this. And he's running to the BBC studios in Westminster. While he's doing all that, this happens. Have a look. Disgusting Bye. racist. Oh, Rewriting the history, no, you're a disgusting Wait, racist. Are you saying it's not true? You're, yes, you're a lying racist. Really? Why don't you go and check your history? A Nazi apologist. A Nazi apologist. Check your history. A Nazi apologist. You're a disgusting Nazi apologist, Livingstone. Rewriting history. Go back and check what Hitler did. Go back and check what Hitler did. There's a book called Mein Kampf. You've obviously never heard of it, written in 1925. Yes, you've never read it. You've no, you know nothing about it. You know nothing about what Hitler did in 1932. Dachau concentration camp in his first 50 days. The race purity laws in his first 100 days. And you dare say, you dare say that Hitler supported Zionism. You're at, you've, you've lost it, mate. You need help. Go you back need and help. Help. Saying, you need help. No, no, you need help. You need help. Factually wrong. No, factually wrong. Racist remarks. Go and check your history. That's check my history. That was the policy they ran on in you, 32. You, 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 His view was it. to deport all you the Jews lost of Germany it. to Israel. You have lost it. Is it true or not? You have lost it. You. Oh, I've never seen. To be fair, 
I echo the sentiments of Andrew Neil on BBC uh, Daily Politics. I've never seen anything like that in all my life, covering news, uh, current affairs and politics. Quite extraordinary behaviour by John uh, Mann. Some of the accusations he levelled uh, at the... Um, party, yeah. the don't know what happened there. We'll just carry on as normal. We do record this live, as you know, every Friday. Some of the things he said to Livingston were absolutely reprehensible. And for him to be screaming at him, red in the face, saying that he lost it, was kind of ironic. John Mann chairs the all-party parliamentary group against anti-Semitism. Uh, this was set up in 2005. That's also very interesting. The all-party parliamentary group against anti-Semitism. Why would you need one of those? What about anti-Irishness? What about anti-bald-headed guys with uh, no teeth and big glasses? What about anti-Islamophobia uh, parliamentary groups? Do they exist? I'm interested in that. The inquiry. Uh, in 2009, he was given the American Jewish Committee's Jan Karski Award in recognition of his commitment to fighting anti-Semitism in all of its forms. We'll talk about anti-Semitism in uh, a couple of minutes and what anti-Semitism really means. Before that, David Cameron, the British Prime Minister, couldn't wait to weigh in on this. Remember, he'd been speaking about anti-Semitism this week when Jeremy Corbyn was challenging him about academisation during Prime Minister's questions. Corbyn talked about local authorities. Cameron said, it's a bit rich you talking about local authorities because of anti-Semitism. This was all about Naz Shah, the Bradford MP. This is David Cameron. The former Mayor of London... Uh, Ken Livingstone has been suspended uh, from the Labour Party uh, for his comments. Um, do you have any response to that? Well, first of all, on what happened yesterday, the remarks of the Labour MP and what has happened today, I mean, it is quite clear the Labour Party has got a problem with anti-Semitism. And I think they've got to recognise that anti-Semitism is like racism. It is unacceptable in a modern political party, and every political party facing this problem has got to deal with it. And as I said to Jeremy Corbyn some weeks ago, when I was shouted down in the House of Commons with cries of disgraceful from the Labour benches, they got a problem. It's now totally apparent they got a problem and they got to deal with it. And while all of this is going on and the mass British media are massing together to label anybody who criticises the activities of the State of Israel as anti-Semites, while all of that's going on, what's getting lost in it in the debate is what Livingston actually said when he was asked the question by Vanessa Feltz on BBC London Radio, when he was asked about Naz Shah, because Shah also went on to say that what Hitler did was legal. She didn't elaborate on that. What she was referring to, of course, was the deal that uh, the Nazi party had arranged and had come to with German uh, Jewish Zionists within Germany, who wanted to relocate uh, German Jews to Palestine and all of their property and all of their wealth and all of their belongings and their money and all of that as well. Hayden is putting up on the screen there now the uh, Havara Agreement. This agreement was signed in 1933. What's very interesting about all of this, and it never gets spoken about, and I said this on the radio show yesterday, is that historians are not conspiracy theorists now, but accredited academic uh, university historians believe that right up until 1939, Hitler was still pursuing this particular agenda. Now, we also know, of course, that in the meantime, anybody who didn't look like the way Hitler wanted them to look, anybody who was Jewish, anybody who was disabled, anybody who looked a bit like a gypsy, was being sent off to be tortured and murdered in the con concentration camps. Nobody disputes any of that. But fundamentally what Livingston was saying was right. And tragically, I find myself agreeing with George uh, Galloway here. <laughs> Anytime you want, you can jump in. No time for George Galloway. Never have and never will. But Galloway said something yesterday. That's right. He said Livingston has been condemned for addressing as a, an historical fact. Now, just before Hayden comes in, I am going to suggest this. Not going to do what other producers and presenters do, which is bore you by repeating stuff over and over again that they've said in previous programmes. But we have demonstrated, we have demonstrated unequivocally and we have put ourselves beyond reproach with the research we have done to show you who funded and supported the lunatic 
Third Reich and Adolf Hitler, the pharmaceutical companies, the industrialists, many of them Zionists. And I put it to you that the establishment cannot have people learning this, cannot have this discussion on the BBC, on Sky, on Channel 4. We must not allow people, particularly Jewish people, who are born into the same slavery we were born into, into the same lies, into the same cabal, they must never find out that while Jewish men and women interned at concentration camps in Germany and in Poland were being tortured and murdered in unspeakable ways, that it had the support of some of those who created, through the sykes picot Agreement and the Balfour Agreement, those who created the State of Israel. It's an amazing fucking paradox, but it's absolutely true. And this is why Lord Sugar is going on Radio 5 today, calling for, well, basically calling for uh, Livingston to be arrested. He's saying it's criminal to equate Nazi Germany with Zionism and with Israel. But you can't get away from it. Hayden, you take issue with why Livingston said what he said and the way he phrased it. Yeah, I, um, politicians as ever, they're, they're usually extremely well versed and experienced in never answering anything, yeah. never saying anything. Ken Livingston uh, has demonstrated he's a crushing hypocrite anyway in the past. He's come out and basically given ammo to anybody that wants to automatically equate uh, anti-Israel or you know, anti-Israel policy, should we say. It's not even anti-Israel because that is just another country made up of people that yeah, are like yeah, yeah. power-mad assholes like we are. I, I, don't, I don't like using that term. Um, but anti-Israel policy, anti-Israel government, whatever you want to call it, uh, he's given them ammo by just putting his big fat foot right in it, going, I'm backing that shot because Hitler was basically, this is the ammo he's given them. Do you know, um, it's, funny you say, it, it's funny you say that. Our mutual Think of friend. Think the language, though. Think oh, no, listen, I, I'm not going to argue with you. In that sense, <laughs> our mutual friend, even though you've never met him, uh, Ben Gelbloom, who's a terrific writer and based in London, Ben's a Jewish uh, lad, uh, produced me at The People's Voice. Ben is very much like many Jewish people in this country, we're surrounded by great Jewish men and women in this company. Uh, great people who live, you know, lived in Manchester for years. Uh, many of them, as I've met here, who've got serious issues with the behaviour of the Israeli government. Ben agrees with you. He said that basically Livingston has given them a stick to beat them with. And I can't really argue with you there, but I'm going to say this, they're doing it anyway. We're going to play a clip from Lord Levy in a minute where they're trying to equate anybody who's talking about Zionism, which people understand the legal, not the legal, people understand it to mean literally, you know, the creation of the, you know, the permanent homestead and home place for the Jewish people based on the biblical promise, God unto Abraham, you know, Golda Meir said it, didn't he? You know, how can you call into question the legitimacy of Israel? It stands as a promise by God himself. Now, that's what people understand. But Zionism is, is much more than that. And that's what Ike means. And it's what I mean. And Jim Mars means and others when they talk about the Zionist conspiracy and the banking conspiracy. It's got nothing to do with Jewish people. And I, I take your point that Livingston has given him a stick to beat him with and me with and others. But we shouldn't have to. We shouldn't have to be told that. We, no, <laughs> Sorry, we sh man, we shouldn't have to do a lot No, of but we shouldn't, we shouldn't allow guys like Levy, a war criminal, by the way, one of the worst human beings on planet Earth, say that guys really mean they hate Jews when they talk about Zionism. Ah, but isn't they one of the, we, we one should of never the huge problems stand we've got, that. though, as we discussed earlier, one of the yeah. huge problems out there is there are a lot of people, I say in the alternative media, because that's what we both, they're the waters we swim in. Yeah, they're yeah, the yeah. people we see day in, day out. There are a large number of people that genuinely must check under the bed for Jews before they go to sleep at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah. with the Muslims and things. So I can't can speak for them. And you're right. And people who, when we, so we talk about the Rochdale thing. It always stains it. The Rochdale it thing. always stains it. And no matter where, what your opinion might be, on any side, you will always find ammo to discredit those yeah. you're up against. Yeah, but I'm not going to answer for now. these people here. I'm, I'm, I'm a history graduate. I'm a guy who has worked for Jewish radio station owners. Uh, who never had a problem with talking about these issues so long as we didn't have roaring you know, anti-Semitic Holocaust mm. deniers on the programmes. Yeah. And yes, there are plenty of lunatic Holocaust deniers out there. I get emails from some of these people when I'm doing shows about this. I put it to you last week. When I say you, I talk to you. I don't talk to, I talk to you. I don't talk to anybody else. Yeah. The, the, 
the the eight family banking cartel who had uh, who basically planned and funded both world wars who wanted uh, to bring about the European Union for the centralisation of power their part in bringing Hitler into power and funding everything the madman did there is a concerted effort to keep that information away from people one of the ways of doing that is to label anybody who criticises Israel's policies and anti-Semites and ignoring the fact that guys like me have spent most of my career not bitching about Israel oh Jesus no I spent most of my life bitching about the United States Great Britain and Saudi Arabia and Iran at times but I'm not going to be labelled as a guy who like David years ago David means uh, he means uh, Jews when he says lizards that went away because there was no because there was no oh, merit to it. Well, it doesn't, you know? doesn't everyone do that? Yeah, but in we can't have argument. it in because you you know this better than anybody and I am gonna let I am gonna shut the fuck up and let you speak. What you know better than anybody. This g- goes side by side with the non violent extremists are just just as dangerous. So when you're putting these videos on live like, that show what's really going on in Syria and when you're saying that you know who really funded ISIS you might inspire some lunatic in Bradford to up Just take up, up arms Just exactly so you're dangerous anger. and that's where this narrative is coming hey, from hey, it's the is. same thing okay. don't talk about Israel and its crimes you're a racist here's the deal I say think. something negative about Israel. Mm. Now remember, I've been each of these things often on the oh, same. Oh, you get day. accused of a whole lot, yeah. On yeah. the same day. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you if you yeah. criticise Israel, for example, for Good displacing place to be. and um, destroying families in the West Bank, I'm yeah. anti-Semite. Yeah, yeah. If I then speak out about elements of, uh, I'm going to call it Islamic culture, the culture of certain Islamic countries that are hugely negative and repressive and disgraceful. And linked to the religion, not excused by it, but linked to it. It's a simple fact. I'm yeah, yeah, an yeah. Islamophobe. Yeah, yeah. If I talk about the militant atheists, who to me are more annoying, uh, just they're just like the syphilis of logical thought. Yeah. I'm pro-religion, or I'm anti-religion. You've got to be. What we are now in every debate we enter into, it's not enough that you can have a different opinion to mine. I have to prove why you're a bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For having yeah, that yeah. opinion, I have to prove that you are propping up evil. For example, I can say Hamas are a shocking organisation responsible for the deaths of many of their own civilians, the blatant murder of their opposition, which makes me apparently pro-Israel, even though I'm blatantly not pro-Israel. No, you're, you're, you're like me, you're a pacifist. You, you know, condemn I mean, violence just, no matter it who. It disgusts me. And the fact that but we want to have the debate always, why, 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 did the, why did the IRA do what the IRA did? Why do groups like Hamas do what they do? What I'm saying is the institutions of the state will do everything and anything to the point of destroying people's careers to prevent that debate happening. Yeah, like any other debate they don't want to happen. That's right. Because of where it goes. Because Ike is not a madman. Or uh, Jim Mars is not a madman. Norman Finkelstein is not a madman. But this what? is the weird thing. I, I, I've, I've not met millions of Jewish people. Yeah, yet. me neither. But yeah. the ones I know and the ones I work with would not be remotely surprised to find out, oh my, what you mean some Jews might not be good people? Yeah, 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 yeah. You mean that some Muslims aren't good people? Some Christians aren't good people? What do you mean Stalin was an atheist? No, it can't no. be. But what I, say, what, what I say, and I think you probably disagree with, and, and I think that's why we get on, I think, you know, we can disagree happily. The Rothschild Zionist plans... And this is what I reckon nobody, you know, the vast majority of people don't understand this, let alone the vast majority of um, Jewish men and women who are absolute slaves to this like everybody else. There was a reason why the State of Israel was put, uh, was, 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 was set up through the agreements I talked about. And it had a lot to do with the centralisation of power and control, particularly control in the region. And the proof of it is in the you know, the Fritz Thyssen um, uh, archives, in the IG Farben archives, and all these people, the Prescott Bushes and all these people as well. That's the proof of it. And those most vocal, those most vocal, I'm talking about pure Rothschild Zionists, the David Camerons, the George Osborns, those most vocal about anti-Semitism couldn't give a shit 
about the plight of Jewish people. No, of course. Not. Couldn't give a shit it's like all the about Jewish people the and a home and for the Jews. Couldn't give a damn. Richie, it's like the regions in the Middle East that yeah. could not care less if they tried about the damn. Palestinians. No, no. They treat them like dirt wherever they yeah. go. It's all the tool. So this to me, if I'm going to believe, if I'm going to buy into the whole Rothschild agenda of centralization of uh, yeah, population yeah. decimation and all that, this is again where I'd go, well, why even call them Zionists? Because they're not, it's just another tool. To no, them. we call them Zionists because they used the... the well, reli- you could say the religion. country as well. Yeah, but, but they, they used the, the, the movement uh, of Zionism as the, for two reasons but surely I, you could call them just globalists or Europeanists no because the most important and, and again my my mate Ben Gelman agrees with you here I must say uh, on this particular point because Hayden they used what happened to the Jews in the second world war and it did happen by the way because we do have lunatics watching this now who will be uh, putting comments under YouTube saying that we're fucking liars because we're not acknowledging that the Holocaust never happened did happen, by the way, because they deliberately used the support for the state of Israel based on what happened to the Jews in the Second World War and historically to the Jews, it must be said. They used that as a cover. Okay. As a, they must never criticise what we're doing. I accept Because that. fundamentally, a lot of these people are Zionists. But these, you this, see, this thing with the Rothschilds and everything else has been going on a lot longer than the state of Israel or the Zionist movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yet we associate them by the thing that has the best hook. Because it does have a great hook. Because you can hook into a lot of people. We can't call them Europeanists, globalists, because it's not as exciting. Zionists, that's been the big thing of the last hundred years. We'll plug into that. But it's how they've hidden what they're doing but here. we've also it's given... through the support of Zionists. We've given the lunatic... And that's important. The ammo. Yes, but... But but again, what what can I do about that? Nothing. What what can any researcher well, we do about that? Perpetuate it. Yeah. We go the state of Israel. Well, it's just a tool. Yeah. If you honestly believe in the Rothschilds and these small number of power brokers controlling and wishing to rule the world, decimate the population, encourage well, all the we, terrible we, we, things. Well, we can leave the decimation of the population aside. Okay. For all a minute. the terrible things. Yes. Yeah. We're 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 talking about. Um, uh, a central banking conspiracy that started with the setting up of the federal. It started before the setting up of the federal reserve. The real reason and, for the civil uh, war. Exactly. And um, last week on last week's show, when I was talking about how these guys funded World War One and World War Two, I'm not making that up, and it's not straight out of you know crazy conspiracy yeah, theories. They, they did. They did, and they are still around these people. And many of them are avowed supporters of Israel. And this is the tragedy of it, because you do get the lunatics in the racist elements of the independent media who just don't see this and they call it a Jewish conspiracy my mate tells me it's lazy to call it Zionism it's lazy to talk about Zionism we talk about Zionism because they've hidden it through Zionism they've hidden their plans to bring about a one world government you know I believe this I know that you, you there, there are lots of elements of this you don't go along with and I totally respect that but for me that's how they've hidden what it is they've been doing for so long mm because they make themselves immune from it by their avowed Zionists when really they're not really Zionists that's the irony of it they couldn't give a shit I about say, Israel I would put it to or you Palestine that, uh, again you can be here all day but it's good stuff this is correct I will put it to you they don't give a shit what you think what you say what you do or anything because they're untouchable we already know people of even a, a, a power level of a prime minister or the cabinet are untouchable. Yeah, yeah, untouchable yeah, yeah. in real and, terms. And, and, and these people are these people are the, the because whether I agree with all of what you say or not, I'm not foolish enough to believe the seat of power in our country is David Cameron. Or yeah, yeah, certainly yeah, yeah, not absolutely. Queen. Yeah. And in America, it's not Obama or whoever comes next. Yeah, the seat of power is not that; it's the people behind the throne. The it's, power behind the throne. It's and with a tiny amount of represent. people. And where David is, I think where David is right, um, and he used to get ridiculed for it, not so much anymore, is that these particular families and the royal families, bloodline is very important to these people. I really do believe that. This, you know, I, there, there's a lot, you know, the, the perception, deception, any of David's books, you know, whether you believe it or not, they're, I'm not speaking to you, Hayden. I'm speaking to that particular viewer who uh, doesn't agree with me. Bloodline is important to these people. And world domination is what this is really all about. It really is. It's the transfer of every last natural resource in the planet into the hands of a few people. And it's not the 1% either. It's not the 1%. It is a handful of families who through the generations have been manipulating world events to bring it about. Yeah, there are times when I look in the mirror and I can't believe it. 
Uh, but um, will we just run Levy's clip? Just run Levy because I, I want people to hear what Levy had to say. The war criminal, yeah. It's absolutely crucial that the leadership of the party stamp this out um, for once and for all, and our system needs to deal with it right. because you know. There, there, there can be criticism of the state of Israel, but anti-Semitism, being having an, a, a, using the word Zionist as another form of anti-Semitism, frankly, can no longer be tolerated. Right. Brilliant stuff, Lord Levy. Look, I, I could be, you know, I could be cheap. I could waste time talking about Levy and the eight years he was Blair's Middle East envoy. I could talk about the fact that he was questioned by the police for cash for honours. I know Levy would say that the charges were dropped and he was never uh, officially charged with anything. But this is a monumental scumbag. And I'll tell you something else. I'm not going to tolerate. I am not going to tolerate being called or being labelled as anti-Semitic or as somebody who's hiding my loathing of the Jews through my uh, criticism of the Zionist movement. Not having it. It's as simple as that. This is the Richie Allen television show brought to you in association with beyondvision.tv and davidike.com. Uh, we'll be back in a minute after these. Attention, small business owner. When is a box more than just a box? No! No! Oh no, that's just weird. A box is more than just a box when it can give you a couple of extra hours in bed, or at the very least, some time to do something more fun and or productive than bookkeeping. Just bang all your paperwork in a box and we'll take care of the rest. Accounts Direct. Accountants on your side. Welcome back to The Richie Allen Show in association with BVTV and DavidIke.com. Once again, happy birthday, Ikey, 64. Right, moving on. A couple of quick plugs. Uh, check out the Live League show every Thursday at 9pm British summertime. Uh, my mate Hayden Hewitt and a cast of thousands uh, having fun. A uh, lot of trolling, a lot of pranking going on, but a lot of pissy and very... Uh, uh, well observed comments about politics on the show as well every Thursday at 9pm davidike.com forward slash headlines uh, the worldwide wake up tour takes place this year and next year all the details on davidike.com remember it's not in Shepherd's Bush now on the 18th of June it is in the O2 Brixton Academy looking forward to seeing David on the Isle of Wight myself uh, for, for the warm up event I'm going to see that and I'll see him then in January here in Manchester which is nearly sold out fantastic Fantastic. Looking forward to that. This week was a great week for people like me who have said for years that the establishment, the tyranny, the paradigm we live in must be torn down brick by brick. We must not vote. We must not put our faith in politicians and we must reject the parliamentary and the democratic process. We must do that. We must stand together. What happened this week was positively brilliant. The families of 96 men and women and children whom were unlawfully killed, as we have known for years, at a football match in uh, Hillsborough, in Sheffield, on the 15th of March. It was the 15th, Andy, the, uh, of April, excuse me. I always get that wrong. I always get the, one of, the 15th of April, 1989. Uh, Liverpool played Nottingham Forest in an FA Cup semi-final uh, at Hillsborough. Uh, 96 people were crushed to death. It was horrendous. It was shown live on Irish television. RTE had the rights to the game. I was in hospital with pneumonia. I was watching it and I couldn't believe what I saw. We've never seen anything like that ever again in terms of a, as graphic as that. These days, they wouldn't film it. They would cut away from it and you couldn't see what was going on. I can't imagine what it was like for the families coming to terms with what happened to their children and their brothers and sisters. Even more so, when, uh, and Hayden's going to put it up on screen now, when the Sun newspaper, under the guidance of a guy called Kelvin McKenzie, put this on its front page four days after the disaster. Some fans pickpocketed a victim, some fans urinated on the brave cops, some fans beat up a PC giving the kiss of life. Further into the newspaper, they claimed that one of the women who had died uh, on the pitch, uh, or who died after being brought out onto the pitch, was actually abused by some of the fans. 
this is where you start to get angry. But I'm not going to. I, I, I'm not going to get angry. More so because I was trained as a journalist at WLRFM in Waterford many years ago. I've worked in commercial and national radio and nobody would have believed that. When Kelvin McKenzie was given that information, nobody would have believed it. Kelvin, uh, we were getting uh, some stories in from a, a bureau in Sheffield and from the cops. They were abusing the dead and they were pissing on the police. No, they weren't. They ran the story anyway. The same day the verdicts came in of unlawful killing, unanimous verdicts came in, the, um, the scumbag Mackenzie. Thanks, Hayden. Those are the, the, the newspaper headlines from the following day. Auspicious, or inauspicious, auspicious by their absence, or the son, the son didn't want to talk about it. Apparently there was a story inside, didn't want to talk about it. Conspicuous, I should say, by their absence, conspicuous. Hayden, um, Mackenzie was captured by a journalist going into his local supermarket a few hours later. Let's have a look. He didn't look too well here. Have a look. I absolutely agree with it. It's been an absolute disgrace what the police have done in South Yorkshire this last 27 years. I feel desperate for the families and the people. And I also feel that in some strange way, I got caught up in it. I feel terrible for them. Strange way? You printed it on the front of your paper? of course I did. Everybody got sent this agency story. I printed it in that way. But honestly, the way it affected... The way it affected those families was a disgrace. I'm delighted for the families. Hayden, jump in any time you want. Monumental scumbag. Now, you founded one of the world's biggest websites and most used websites in the world. You are a journalist. I am a journalist. We are sceptical bastards, the two of us. We hear stuff on a daily basis. We don't take it at face value. We look at it and see if there's any merit to it and then we talk about it. If I came to you and said women were being abused while people were getting the kiss of life, those brave policemen were being pissed on, what would you have said at the time? I'd have run the headline. Richie Allen claims... Women were being abused and thereby covering all bases. Uh, if, if, if it was as they say, oh, we were just relying on information from the police. Is this the only time in history they're not put police claim? Yeah. Because isn't that what you're supposed to do? You're reporting. <clears throat> if you can't find out anything deeper, you report the claim and you report it as a claim. Not it's as a very fact, good point, isn't it? Not you, as And it's your job as a journalist to investigate the veracity of the claims but of the South Yorkshire news, police. We all know there's mistakes yes. in breaking news. Yeah. You're trying to get things out fast. That's why we have words like claim, but this was, alleged. But this was five days later. Richie, it gets worse with the Hillsborough thing. It, within, what was it, within 15 minutes? Yes, in the control room, they were working on the cover-up yeah, within the straight control room. Away. And this head, my friend, I want you to stay with me. Okay. Uh, this is where uh, we bring in uh, the MP Ian Patnick, rest in peace, who mm. passed away in December 2012. Because he comes into this, uh, basically he's quoted in this Sun article. Now, late in 2012, I think in September, as you can see there, when his knighthood was threatened, this fucker <laughs> decided to apologise for the lies that he told the Sun newspaper in the form of Kelvin McKenzie, this Ian Patnick guy. Um, because you and I believe, you and I, we've spoken about this before, that while the families are quite right now to pursue criminal proceedings against the South Yorkshire police and their, their, their conspiracy of perjury for years, they also really want to open up again uh, an inquiry into the depths of the cover-up and the conspiracy because we believe it came from number 10 Downing Street, Margaret Thatcher, through the patsy Ian Patnick. These guys were used, as was Mackenzie, scumbag as he is, by the way, they were used to create the, the, uh, the narrative that the fans were pissheads. Football fans in general are scum. This was seized upon and the cover-up went to the highest levels of government. You agree with that, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah. We believe it. Well, we have evidence to support it. Let's, let, let's I, put I it like that. I think even if it wasn't a concerted case, yeah. right quick, everybody on this. It, it's yeah. long been this withheld notion. Yeah. Anything to attack the common working class people is always a bonus for these scumbags. 
Um, because what, what's we, amazing yeah. is though it's never stopped just during this inquest alone how many millions did the South Yorkshire police spend millions. having lawyers repeat lies repeat lies was it something like 17 million when before the inquest they acknowledged their disgusting part yeah, the in the whole thing and then they went to court and told it back a lies what a waste of taxpayers money now hey by the way not for the families we're not talking about the families here. They had to have their day in court. Oh, yeah. But it should never have come to that after 26 years. No, what's years. a waste is the nearly £20 million. Pounds, or 17, I wish I could remember the exact figure. Probably about £17 million, Yeah, it's like millions. Yeah, yeah. Spent. The barristers get a huge chunk on of it. Lies. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, the families wouldn't have had to go through anywhere near as much if they'd just gone, here's the evidence, this is what happened. It would have been a far shorter inquest, far less tortures. They'd have gotten justice far, far sooner. Hadn't they already waited long enough? Why drag it out another couple of years? It's just torture for them. You know, I'm going to say this, and we're not beforeitsnews.com. We're not yournewswire.com either. But I'm going to say this. Because of the depths to which that conspiracy of silence went, I find it remarkable that a couple of months after Pat Nick's apology, he turns up dead. Now, this ain't, you know, as I said, you wouldn't be involved if it was we're not one of those ludicrous programmes that just make stuff up but I looked at all the obituaries of Patnick on the uh, on the internet yesterday finding a cause of death now it probably was published somewhere at the time he might have died of a short illness or he was 83, 84 let's be honest about it it's not old, 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 old but it's old, old and uh, he might have passed away but I find it fascinating because if Patnick was used as a patsy by the British government to spread malicious lies about the Liverpool fans and by football fans in the wider society. And then he starts coming out apologising. Yeah, it wouldn't be, on, be beyond the bounds of possibility for somebody to drop something in his, uh, in his cornflakes, you know. Well, let's, let's, I just wonder, is all I'm saying. Because of the type of show we are, let's play the other side. Yeah. He's a politician. Yeah. They lie as easily as they breathe. He's trotting the line out. Mouth, he yeah. suddenly thought it's more politically expedient if I apologise. Yeah. To save my own. It's more politically expedient. Terrible, two terrible words. Politically expedient. You are right. So you we are have not, to look at both sides. You have to look at both yeah. sides. Of it. But one thing we do know is, is that if number 10 ordered the cover up of this or the deep state, and I think they probably did do, they will do anything to stop that coming out. I believe the South Yorkshire police are absolutely reprehensible. They should go to prison uh, for a time. Those involved in creating the lies from the word go, let's blame it on the pissed up uh, rowdy fans, put them in jail and all that. But I believe that Patnick and the fans and even the disgusting Kelvin McKenzie were used. They were patsies. It was a monumental cover up, I believe. Can I, I, I can't prove it though. It's almost trite. But let's yeah. put this in terms of the world we live in, the alternative media. Yeah. If a horrendous man like Chris Spivey, yeah, yeah. who, for a very limited amount of time, really harassed the family of Lee Rigby. He did, yeah, yeah, really he did. Really dreadfully yeah, yeah. harassed them, yeah. said the most hateful things. Yeah. If he can be banged up for it, why on earth can't we bang up the officers responsible for the uh, elongated pain and suffering of these families is it yeah. much the same thing they didn't give a shit I expect, I know, that's not me saying well if they, they Spivey shouldn't have been put away he, I'm fully up for him getting his wrist slapped I want to see these guys get their spanking as well I think it would be only right only fair that some measure of justice is handed out to these families say this is all we can do but it's something brilliantly said my friend brilliantly said and I said it on the radio the other night the fans the, the families of the fans have been in prison for years and I compared them to the Birmingham 6 and the Guildford 4 they weren't behind bars but they were in a cell they were in they were in an invisible prison of torment and torture that their loved ones were accused of being scumbags who caused by reckless endangerment the deaths of their friends and of their fellow supporters. So I say they should be compensated by the government to the tune of whatever and they should never pay taxes ever again. If we can I really believe that. If South Yorkshire Police can pay 17 million for Absolutely life, right. Absolutely right. We can afford to make sure these One, people can never erase right. the pain, can never replace anyone. No. But you can take away some other of life's burden. Absolutely. Some small measure of compensation. And just before we hear from Margaret Aspinall, before we close the programme, I want to say this as well. I believe 
that football fans, and I'm not being romantic here. You know, I know that some people can go to matches. United have some idiot fans. We've all got fans that do stupid things at games. But historically, football fans mobilise to support causes. They have done it historically. They support trade unions. They support anti-privatisation and anti-globalisation movements. Fanzines through the generations have been packed, especially in this city, the Man City fanzines and the Man United fanzines, packed with socialist um, arguments and socialist articles, as well as all the funny football stuff. They saw it as an opportunity to demonise football fans and to put down football fans and to put down the mobilisation of people. And that had a lot to do with the old Caesar stadiums as well. No doubt about that. And that's another issue for another day. But I want to finish that with um, Margaret Aspinall, whom uh, every time... I've never met Margaret Aspinall. I interviewed her on the radio a few years ago in Spain. And, uh, but every time I see her on the TV, I want to give her a big hug. She's everybody's mother at this moment. Uh, this is her speaking on uh, at the vigil uh, the other night in Liverpool in the city centre. This is her talking about how the state does what the state does. It's brilliant. Have a look at Margaret Aspinall. When we were sitting in them courts for these past two years and listened to the same, coming out with the same lies to blame our fans for being drunk, ticketless, late. That tells me of a system that we've got in this country and it needs to be changed. I am not scared to say this, but the system itself, the police force of South Yorkshire ought to be ashamed of themselves and hang their heads in shame. They put the families through hell and torture for all of these years. Along the way, we've lost an awful lot of our families. There's so many who have died and not even seen truth or justice yesterday. That saddens me. But we will make sure that the people pay the price, whatever way, with accountability, for what they caused this city, these people, and our families and our fans. Congratulations to Margaret Aspinall and all the families of the 96 people who were unlawfully killed at Hillsborough on the 15th of April 1989. What they've shown, I think, is that you can move mountains if you work together in big numbers and leave ego and leave self-preservation and leave self-promotion to one side and act for the common good. And that's what I've been most amazed about. And I've covered this on radio for years. In Spain and Ireland, I've been talking to the victims' families for years. And what I've noticed about them along the way, there's never been anybody in it for their own end. And if you do that, you can move mountains and you can destroy the tyranny that enslaves most of us today, the central banking cartel, that enslaves us through the European Union, through everything else that we talk about on this programme. If you stand up to it, get up off your arse and get out of your house, say we're not having it. The Liverpool family said, we're not having it. Might have taken them 26, 27 years to get justice. They started the process. It was an unlawful killing. Now they can go after the Duck and Fields and the others and the Mackenzies for what they did and go after them and go after the conspiracy and who really covered it up. That's it for this Friday's edition of the Richie Allen Show in association with davidike.com and beyondvision.tv. Thanks so much for watching it. I look forward to talking to you again next Friday. Uh, at the same time, he says, we might be live next Friday. We'll see how it works. We might not be. Thanks to Hayden for production and thanks to you for watching. Have a magnificent long weekend if you're in England and wherever else you are in the world. Have a great weekend. Until next time, bye for now.